Okay, we're live. What's going on, Applying Food Camp? Give me a second. Hey, this is the first, uh, I think maybe my second time actually uh, going live. I'm going to make sure that the chat actually uh, come up and we can actually see you all coming up in the chat. But I want to thank everybody for actually joining us today. Uh, if you hadn't already, go buy your pick tickets to the National Convention. we got the National Applying um, Boot Camp Convention coming here. It's going to be June 15th through the 17th. Um, there's a link in the description. Go ahead and buy your tickets. Also, I want to thank everybody who actually went out and uh, voted for the town of Selma for uh, the strongest town. Unfortunately, we didn't make it past the Elite Eight, but we got to the Elite Eight, which was very good. Um, the town thanks you all um, and uh, really appreciate everything that you all have done uh, to help the town grow and achieve. Um, also, we're going to have uh, next Applied Boot Camp Hands On Live event. It's going to be April the 14th, 15th, and 16th. Yeah, it's going to be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, that's coming up. Uh, so uh, if you're coming, uh, just let me know. Remember, just like last time, if you bought the online course or you have done at least 20 service stops and you want to come in and uh, sit in the alumni table, you're very welcome to come sit at the alumni table because uh, at that point in time, we look at you as being an asset. You, um, you're not there just taking, but you're there where you can actually contribute and give inspiration and give so the knowledge and wisdom to the actual uh, new people who are coming through. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, tonight, we have a special guest. We have Z-Man here. Uh, mm -hmm. He's with uh, three brothers, three boys popcorn. Three boys popcorn. Three boys popcorn. Uh, you all know I do a little bit with kettle corn. Uh, when I first got started, uh, I had a lot of people who, uh, cause he, was, he was right across the town in Smithfield, I'm in Selma, and I would get a lot of people who would actually think that I was him. They would say, uh, you over in the outlet? And I was like, no, I'm not in the outlet, I'm downtown. Well, there's another guy in the outlet, so uh, he actually came over one day and introduced himself, and we've known each other ever since. Uh, but uh, he's coming in today because, uh, like I want to do, I want to give you all uh, all the stuff that I do make my money in. Uh, one of the things I make my money is in kettle corn. I want to get somebody who's been in kettle corn longer than I have, who sees the up and down, who knows the kettle corn business, to talk to you all about kettle corn. Uh, so uh, with that being said, uh, I got here Mr. Uh, Z-Man. And uh, once again, can you tell us the name of your kettle corn business? Uh, Three Boys Popcorn, formerly known as Popcorn Pleasers. Uh, and we're out of Winterville, uh, North Carolina, uh, in the Carolinas. And um, I just thank God for being here, you know. And uh, how did you get started in kettle corn? Well, um, it was unfortunate, but my uh, my brother, uh, Kenneth Popcorn Man Jenkins, mm -hmm. he started the business. Oh, okay. Uh, he started a business doing popcorn. Uh, doing local events, doing um, you know, church events, doing some fundraisers, um, but he passed in 2015. Mm -hmm. And um, but he left a legacy here and a recipe of the sweet and salt uh, that we have cherished. And so, after maybe a year of him passing, my me and my family we got together and we started up his business again. And um, it's been uh, a, a good road. I've learned a lot uh, from the popcorn business, and um, you know I'm willing to share information to help someone else in that area. Okay. And uh, um, doing this uh, kettle corn, uh, does it take any type of special certification or license to get into the kettle corn? Uh, no, sir. Um, it is basically just create your business name. Um, go to your local health department, um, and they will tell you. Uh, since uh, kettle corn is not regulated, you know any kind of popcorn is not regulated, mm -hmm. so you don't have to go through all the hoops and hurdles of putting your product out there. You do have to register with, with the um, agriculture, uh, uh, you know, in the state, mm -hmm. in whatever state you live in. Um, so. You know, they just go to your health department when you do an event or when you have a, a function, let them know what your ingredients are in your product, and you can go from there. Okay, all right. 
Now, uh, how long have you all been doing pop tune? Uh, starting with your brother up until now, about how long has that been? Um, he did the pop tune about five years. Um, um, and we have been doing it about five years now. So about a total of 10 years? About a total of 10 years. There you mm -hmm. go. Remember I tell you all, are you going to get advice from somebody who's doing business, get somebody doing it 10 years from now? <laughs> they've seen good times and they've seen bad times. Now, during the recession, the, uh, during COVID and stuff, were people mm -hmm. still buying popcorn? Still buying popcorn. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It seemed like that people were, they would be, uh, and we were outside, so we actually started mm -hmm. in the uh, 10 by 10 tent uh -huh. and went to uh, local uh, flea markets, uh -huh. farmers markets. Mm -hmm. And so we had to set up the tent and break mm -hmm. it down. And mm -hmm. if anybody know anything about, you know, setting up a tent, that's what, that's what we had to do. Mm -hmm. uh, fighting the weather and all that stuff. So, but, you know, getting into it, it wasn't easy. Right. <laughs> it was not easy, mm -hmm. but it can be done mm -hmm. with persistence. You you can make it happen. Okay. So even in bad times like the COVID and stuff, people still bought popcorn. Yes. That's good. And you already said that uh, this one is not regulated by the health department or falls under the Department of Agriculture for California. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So you have to register with them mm -hmm. um, so that, uh, you know, if anybody has any allergies mm -hmm. or anything like that, or once you uh, come to a, a certain point to a, a income level, mm -hmm. And then that's when you have to have your labels on your bags, mm -hmm. uh, the ingredients and mm -hmm. your uh, nutritional facts. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I have learned. Mm -hmm. um, so once you do uh, 5K, you know, 500K or more, mm -hmm. then you have to start putting your labels right. on, okay. um, especially your uh, nutritional facts and stuff like okay. that. All right. There you go. Good stuff. All right. Um, and is this, like you just said, 500K or more, that's a lot of money. It, <laughs> people say, uh, right here, you have some of your products. But this kettle corn, uh, it, it can't be no money in popping popcorn. It can't be. Is it this stuff profitable or, 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 or not? Well, I'll tell you like this. This is the only um, source of income I've had for the last six years. Popping popcorn, kettle corn. Popping popcorn. Wow. <laughs> and doing lemonade uh -huh. um, with the two, you know, because you need something to drink mm -hmm. um, after you finish the popcorn mm -hmm. or eat your kettle corn. And um, what more can you like is a refreshing drink, all natural, mm -hmm. no preservatives added. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the sweet and salt is the same. Mm -hmm. uh, no preservatives, just pure cane sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, you got uh, pure canola oil and mm -hmm. high dye salt. That's it. Oh, wow. and, and it is a, a, you know, it has taken off. And that recipe that my brother left here is hands down, it's one of the best. <laughs> now, now, I know, like, if I go to Burger King and they cook too many chicken tenders, at the end of the night, they have to throw them away. Now, if you don't sell all the popcorn that you mm -hmm. pop, do you have to throw it away? Uh, no. You don't have to throw it away. What you can do is you can find a vendor or a store owner who could take that popcorn and you can sell it to them mm -hmm. and that popcorn is off your hands. <laughs> and I have found a couple of, of vendors that do that. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they, they take they take that popcorn off my hands and I don't have to worry about it, mm -hmm. throwing it away. Mm -hmm. or And then we give a lot of popcorn away. We give a lot of popcorn away to our, our friends and families, and, and if it's going to be uh, there and not going to be eaten, mm -hmm. there's no need to just throw it away. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people out here um, that are you know homeless or whatever. Mm -hmm. you, you can always find a way mm -hmm. to get that popcorn off of you mm -hmm. and start off with something new. Now, how long does it last for these bags? I know uh, what a day or two they'll start to spool and you have to throw it away, or how long do popcorn last? Well, actually, we started with these bags maybe a year ago, uh -huh. and uh, until that point, we had a uh, seal—well, mm -hmm. not a seal bag, but it was a, a two pie bag. I know the twist. The twist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we started doing the business because people could open it, uh -huh. and so that was our, uh, you know, way mm -hmm. that we were doing business. They could buy the popcorn, mm -hmm. eat the popcorn, uh -huh. and then come back. <laughs> <laughs> 
But now that we're getting into shipping and, and more parties and, and more people, um, they seem to like the seal bag. You know, you don't have any tamper free. You don't have to worry about anything getting into it. Now, to answer your question, uh, this bag would be about a month. There you go. <laughs> it, it would be about a month. Uh, with the, the poly bag, it was already three, uh -huh. three weeks. Right. But you're talking about a month uh -huh. or more. With this bag being sealed, we hand seal it and then we seal it. Mm -hmm. So they won't have to worry about uh, the shelf life on this popcorn. And, and it lasts. I have tried it. I've set some popcorn aside, uh, butter, cheddar, all of them. They hold popcorn really good. But these bags, uh, you know, they will cost you. But the, the, uh, the goal is to keep the product uh, fresh. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and with that being said, if I wanted to get into this kettle corn business, about how much you think it would cost somebody to get in, get started in kettle corn? I would say less than less than five hundred dollars. Less than five hundred dollars? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's with your bags, your supplies. Um, if you were to go into buying a tent or however you go to an event with two tables, you can pop it at home. Um, then bring your product. Um, you can go to a local uh, flea market or a local farmer's market and, you know, produce your product and you won't have a problem. $500 or less, you can you can start a good kettle corn business on a part-time level and then grow. Yeah. Now, how much would like the cooker and all that stuff cost if I going to get started on a bare minimum? Yes, sir. I have um, come across a lot of cookers, but I um, what I use right now, it would probably cost you about thirty five hundred dollars and up. Uh -huh. uh, I've seen them. I've seen them could range from five grand to ten. Mm -hmm. It just depends on what you want to do and what you know. If you want to be on the inside, or you want to start on the outside, or you want to start in a food truck, just depends on what. Uh, you know what mm -hmm. level you want to start at mm -hmm. uh, coming into the business and what kind of capital you have to get started. Okay. All right. All right. That's good stuff. And like I say, uh, I love kettle corn. <laughs> uh, one of the reasons he said, uh, like I say, it's regulated by the Department of Agriculture. I love the Department of Agriculture. I don't want to go up on the health department. That's why I don't have no hot dogs, no cheeseburgers, no french fries. Yes. I love the Department of Agriculture. I like the fact too, uh, if we pop too much uh, popcorn, uh, I can actually put it in the bag, seal it, and it be there a month or so. Uh, I love that part. And uh, like I say, it, it is a very profitable business. It doesn't take much to, uh, to make a lot of money uh, within this business. It doesn't take much uh, to do it. Uh, now, do your, your cookers, yours are uh, automatic stir, or you stir it yourself, or how do you stir? It is uh, a hand stir. Mm -hmm. Um, I use propane, mm -hmm. um, have a, a stainless steel pot, mm -hmm. um, and it comes out. Once it comes out, it goes into a, a, a pan mm -hmm. that has a sifting, so it sifts out the kernels. Mm -hmm. That's what people don't want in it. Right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, it's it's really it's really unique. One person can handle it, mm -hmm. you know. So if you didn't have a, you know, you don't need a whole lot of people to start a business, start a corn business with, uh, you know. You don't need a whole lot of people. Right. One or two people, you can start it. Husband and wife, mm -hmm. uh, sister, brother, mm -hmm. you know, and they can get something going mm -hmm. uh, really quick if they deal with the right people. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, actual kettle corn business uh, machine that I bought, I bought it from an actual uh, uh, husband and wife team. They was like in their sixties, and they, okay. they that's all they done was just kettle corn, and they were getting out of. It. Matter of fact, they were downsizing. They had like two machines. And they actually uh, sold me one of them that uh, they're downsizing. Wow. Uh, so, they, uh, unfortunately, his wife passed uh, about maybe. If you watch him, the Colonel, uh, uh, shout out to the Colonel. He's the guy who actually. Colonel. Matter of fact, I'm buying another uh, um, another uh, uh, shaker. Uh, the shifter, he made me another yeah. shaker. But, uh, yeah, his wife passed last oh, year. Oh, man. Sorry yeah, to so hear he, that. He, he's, he's slowing down. He, he, uh, he's selling me his other equipment. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, That's good. Uh, we're gonna go. Uh, like I said, this is my first time 
and a long time reading uh, from this actual angle with a guest. Uh, so I'm going to read some of the stuff we got going on in the chat. If you would like to uh, actually uh, come on to the live, that's the link right there to the live. And we're going to read here. We got Stoker Reviews. So what's up, ABC fam? Hey, how you doing, Stoker Reviews? Uh, Quinn High. Say, so, hey, Mike and ABC fam. Hey, how you doing? Um, I cannot pronounce your name. Uh, Ashaman Isha. Uh, giving us a hand clap. Hey, how you doing? Uh, uh, greetings, Mike and ABC fam. And Z Man. Okay, Paul Brown. Thanks, man. Right. Um, DLV uh, Mark. Uh, very happy to see this. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, Shay Star, uh, say cool. Okay. Daily revenue. Hey, Mike, uh, what are the prof uh, profit margins like? All right. Um, uh, I, I answer for what I do, and then uh, I let uh, Z Man answer for what he does. Uh, with me, my profit margins are pretty good with this uh, kettle corn. It's actually better than my ice cream. Um, I can buy, uh, uh, I think they come in, is that a 50 pound bag? 50 pound bag. Yeah, 50 pound bag. Uh, I think last time I bought some, maybe like 20 some dollars. Uh, you go buy a 25 bag, um, 25 pound bag of sugar from Walmart for less than $20. Uh, you get some um, salt. You can get the corn oil. Uh, you use a little bit more expensive oil than that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he uses the expensive stuff. I, I use, use the I, canola oil. He uses the canola oil. I yeah. get the corn oil. And uh, from there, uh, you, just like you just use the two cups. I use two cups of uh, popcorn. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That, that, that's not even a dollar worth of popcorn. <laughs> and yeah. not even a dollar worth of sugar. Not even a dollar worth of salt. And from there, um, I can get in my bag. I can get uh I get one big bag that I sell for ten dollars and I get ten of the small bags I sell for five dollars. So that's ten I get sixty dollars for less than about two dollars worth of uh, product. That that's that's the way I pop mine and um and uh it sells. If I if I was to go out y'all seen it, I ain't gotta tell you all y'all see me do it live where I just go out there and, and as soon as you start popping that popcorn, that smell hit the air, they coming. They coming. They come. Yeah. I don't know how, how about you? What, what's your because you he you I, I will tell you all he's been doing it a lot longer. He <laughs> they have their special recipes and he used the, the great ingredients. Uh I go to Walmart and buy the uh buy the Walmart Walmart sugar and corn oil, but he go buy the expensive stuff. I see what he's talking about. <laughs> well I do uh, um just about the same. I do go to Walmart, I buy the uh, pure cane sugar. And the canola oil mm -hmm. is all great value. Yeah. And I use the iodized salt uh -huh. and all that comes from Walmart. Mm -hmm. uh, I've I've found that that taste is what people are looking for. Mm -hmm. I think it's the canola oil, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> when, when my brother was here, mm -hmm. that's what he did. Mm -hmm. He actually used canola oil. So mm -hmm. I, I always prime that in my I'm not gonna deviate uh -huh. from what he used to do. So uh, I use canola oil in all my products. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, um, like you said, um, by the time you put the corn and you know your bags and uh, the sugar, the oil, hey, you got a profit margin there because you don't have no, you don't have no more than maybe about five dollars, maybe <laughs> six, into your. Product product, your bag and everything because yeah. you get these by the thousand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, it just takes work. It just takes a little effort. Um, but you can um, you know have you do have a uh, profit margin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, know, you can make a profit mm -hmm. easy. Yeah. And well like you said, once you start popping, uh whether at a festival or at your home, uh I've I've had people come up when I'm just popping in the yard and they like Man, let me get some of that. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not even selling, but yeah, it, it goes a bag, you know. Uh -huh. And so uh, it happens, you know. The smell of the popcorn brings people. Uh, it gets them excited, especially kids. Mm -hmm. You know, kids they know they can. That's a good wholesome snack. Mm -hmm. uh, they just be, you know, going along the street mm -hmm. just eating a bag of popcorn. Mm -hmm. And once somebody sees a bag of popcorn, look out! It's another person coming. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Uh, King Arles. What's the name of the website for popcorn? Uh, the website for popcorn is Three bro, uh, three three boys popcorn. Uh, uh, you mind? Uh, we have uh, his nephew here, but he's not gonna give him a camera. He said he's behind the scenes. If you could type in the actual address, you're gonna put it in the actual chat uh, for the address. Okay, what's up, Rich Griffin? Said peace, Mike and ABC fam. Hey, how you doing? Daily revenue. Oh wow, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, daily revenue. Does he market only at flea markets? Uh, um, I have a hard time finding an event. Now, uh, you, you want to know, do you just do a flea market? Now, he used to have a brick and mortar, and now he's transitioning to online and mobile? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, go ahead. Uh, so, uh, you can, um, you know, market your, your product not only at flea markets. Uh, the farmer's market is what I learned. It is a craft. People bake goods, they do jewelry. Well, creating popcorn is a craft. So you don't have to, uh, uh, you know, run around and try to find events. Go to your local farmer's market and just start doing kettle corn. You can start doing on, a, on you know, you can do it at home and bring it. Um, that works so that you don't, so that you can see before you put your whole investment into it, if that's what you want to do. Uh, you can get your, uh, you can pop your popcorn at home, get your bags, and take your product to the local farmer's market and make your profit. Uh, it, it will be easy. Now, let me ask you that, I did not know that. Now, that's what I don't know. Mm -hmm. Now, how would you pop it at home without, uh, without the pot? Uh, you have to have your own kettle or? How you pop it at home? Well, uh, I have seen people do with a big pot. Oh, they like the old days, like we yeah. do. Yeah. Uh, okay. Do popcorn. Uh -huh. Have your lid uh -huh. and do your popcorn. Uh -huh. You know, you put your ingredients in. Uh -huh. You can do some butter uh -huh. and you can do some sweet and salt uh -huh. for sure. Uh -huh. And then you can do a light salt. Cause that's how we started. We started out with the sweet salt, which is our classic kettle corn, uh -huh. the butter, and um, light salt. You know, for people that don't do much salt, mm -hmm. so you can do all three of those at home. Wow! Oh, okay. And bring it into a, mm -hmm. a, you know, get your bags. Um, you know, I get my bags from Uline. Mm -hmm. uh, I have gotten them from Amazon just to get started. You know, just do do use some small bags and with a twist tie. You can you can even go to these because these are sealed, and people want something that's Tampa free, you know, mm -hmm. so that some, some get into there and they see that it's sealed. Mm -hmm. Hey, they're gonna jump on. Mm -hmm. it, it's gonna be a no-brainer. So they can start. At home. Okay. I did not know that. I wish I'd known that <laughs> before I got here. <laughs> yeah, but I, now I think about it. Yeah, we that, we didn't have a popcorn popper growing up. We just mm -hmm. had a pop with a lid on it. And my sister and I, yeah. we have just sat there and shake the. Uh, Check the uh, pop, tell the pop. Okay, yeah. I didn't have a paper. So yes, you can get it by, for less than five hundred dollars. You can just pop your stuff at home on your stove, then transport it over there. I go to some of the farmers markets. Um, the ones I go to, uh, I have yet to see somebody pop in there. They bring theirs in tubs mm -hmm. and just, just dip it out into the bag. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. All right. Yeah. So so it's a lot of ways that uh -huh. you can do the business. You can do it on site, or you can do it at home. Mm -hmm. Or you can uh, purchase a food truck, mm -hmm. and um, that's what I've I've done now. Is uh, you know, transition to the food truck. Now you are you popping it in the truck? Because uh, I'm I'm in the process now. I'm in the uh, getting ready to move mine to mobile so to go out further too. Are you actually popping it uh, popping it inside of the truck? Or are you rolling it out and just uh, popping it on the outside and then just selling out the truck? Well, initially we bought the trailer mm -hmm. for a, a storage trailer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's turned into a food <laughs> truck. Uh -huh. We uh we you know we got with some friends of mine mm -hmm. and they helped me cut the cut the window uh -huh. out uh -huh. and um uh, you know put the I'm cooking on the inside basically uh -huh. and um I was bringing the cooker out uh -huh. and my mom and I was like oh, why are we bringing it out well we got a food truck <laughs> <You're right. laughs> so it, it took me a while because we was in the brick and mortar in Smithfield. To transition to cooking in the food truck, but once I did it, it was like night and day. 
Yeah. No more weather. No more. Uh, I could be out there in a storm and mm-hmm. I wouldn't even bother. I mean, just cooking popcorn. Mm-hmm. You know, you got your vents running mm-hmm. and you got your, uh, you know, your, your ventilation. Mm-hmm. You know, you got your hole at the top. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, it's night and day. Oh, wow. And, mm-hmm. then, and then you can go around to different uh, mm-hmm. events mm-hmm. and, you know, just get with the health department, let them know what you're cooking. It's simple. Uh, glad you told me because I was looking, I was looking at doing mine. I said I was gonna have it roll, I was gonna roll the cooker out. But now I think about it, uh, I, I might keep it in. So then I don't have to worry about you just, did you have the ventilation for the heat and all that to go up? Yeah. yeah you're heating your, heating your grease. That's all you need. Yeah. And I'll just cook, get your lines hooked up. Um, you say you cook with propane, right? Yeah, I cook with propane. Yeah, yeah I cook with propane. Mm-hmm. Well, it can be done. Mm-hmm. You just run your lines and, and cook your food truck up and, and go from there, you know. Okay. I think that's the way I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> now, going from that with the brick and mortar, how did you like the brick and mortar? Oh, man. It was something. <laughs> um, to see, and, and, and it goes back to uh, the question that we had mm-hmm. earlier mm-hmm. Uh, about the profit. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, during the week, it could be any day of the week. You know, you get four or five hundred dollars come in. <laughs> I ain't talking about a couple couple yeah. customers, you yeah. know. It don't take a whole lot, uh-huh. you know, sixty here, yeah. uh-huh. eighty here, forty here, uh-huh. and you got your money and you can pay your help. But on the weekends out there, oh my goodness. Lemonade, popcorn, if you didn't have none, you was in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know, it is a great a great business to be in on the inside. You uh you know, and if you have that opportunity, I suggest that you do it. Mm-hmm. Just do it one time so that you can see where your uh, profit is at, mm-hmm. and, and it'll give you exposure to a whole another side of people mm-hmm. that wouldn't normally buy you mm-hmm. if they didn't know you. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. and they shopping, mm-hmm. or you at a, um, you know, you at a gas station mm-hmm. set up. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't know who's gonna pull in. Right, right. I've had times when, at the end of the day, uh, just some of my bigger customers. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, when it's time to close, I'm trying to trying to shut the door, mm-hmm. and somebody come through and spend a hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so it, you don't never know when it's going to come, or how many people's going to mm-hmm. come. Mm-hmm. We've been in the uh, in the store and, and standing room only, uh-huh. and bags just as big as they are, small as mm-hmm. they are, going out lemonade. Mm-hmm. Lines. Uh-huh. Uh, we even have to pull out two squares. <laughs> just I mean, people out. Just, to, just uh-huh. to keep up with people. Uh-huh. You know? and so it's it, it can be it can be overwhelming at some time, but it'll calm down mm-hmm. when people are going. Yep, yeah, that's uh, that's the way we have it too. We have a run. We have run for about two hours, then slow down, mm-hmm. then another run for about two hours, and that's why I tell people. Uh, when you're doing these little businesses, people think it ain't no money in that kettle corn. <laughs> there ain't no money in that ice cream. But like I tell people, you you can go out there and make four or five hundred dollars in a day, uh, and you're doing that consistently. Consistently. Now uh, that it don't take long for the uh, for the catch up, and you uh, you you making real good money, mm-hmm. real good money. Now uh, with that, uh, it, uh, I I've had this question that people ask me too all the time. Okay. Uh, when I first came down here, I actually purchased my buildings and built them out. And everybody right. kept telling me, no, don't do that. You need to just go rent, rent your building. <laughs> don't don't buy, you waste your money, rent, because you don't know uh, uh, if, if you're going to want to stay there at that place or not. And I looked at it, I said, okay, if uh, I'm going to be mobile, but I, I want a place I can actually build and get people to come to. Because it might take me a little longer, but once I get people coming to it, Mm-hmm. And I, like you say, you got your steady customers that's coming every week and stuff. Um, it's okay now, but that initial time, um, instead of me going to a place where they have a bunch of foot traffic and stuff like mm-hmm. that, um, I actually, uh, uh, it took me a while to, to get my customers in. But I think if I would have went to some place where they had a bunch of foot traffic, I would have paid more and uh, I would have made money there. But uh, I don't know if that's the right way. Now, you went to a place that had a bunch of foot traffic mm-hmm. and, and whatnot. Uh, do you, with the next place you go, would you actually go rent or would you actually go buy the next place? I would actually go buy. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. The money um, that, you know, once we totaled up, mm-hmm. the money that we were spending just to operate, mm-hmm. gas, mm-hmm. Uh, 
school lodges. Mm -hmm. we, we live in Winterville, mm -hmm. so we had to drive over an hour away. Mm -hmm. um, and then my health mm -hmm. having to travel. Mm -hmm. So adding all that in, right. it, it is a fence. But what I tell you, uh, if you have the opportunity to experience it, experience it. But don't go into a long contract. Uh, you know, just get you something so that you can get your feet wet. Mm -hmm. But if I had to do it all over again, mm -hmm. I would have never went. You would never went? Never. Wow. Went. You just went straight to online? Or? I just went straight to online. There you go. <laughs> and like you said, build your business from there. Uh -huh. Because uh, it gave me a lot of exposure. Mm -hmm. But the money that I put in, I, I think that uh, going into it now, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have never did it. Okay, okay. You know, not, I mean, and I want to explain myself, not seeing the income. We were making the income, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I could have <laughs> bought. <laughs> All right. uh -huh. I could have bought a place, uh -huh. you know, like you did. Uh -huh. And then I wouldn't be able to be brand off. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. They, they try to, they triple your price? Well, they actually uh perms they call it temporary leasing uh -huh. and that's what I had. Uh -huh. When someone perms like Nike or uh -huh. Reebok come in, uh -huh. they can take your spot. Without without and nothing. Without nothing. Gave uh -huh. us thirty days to be out and uh -huh. then try to move us into another spot and uh -huh. that didn't work. Uh -huh. And then they were like, Well, I was in a smaller space. Uh -huh. Okay, twelve hundred square feet uh -huh. versus 4,200 square feet. Wow. Uh -huh. Now you want me to go firm. Mm -hmm. That ain't going to work. <laughs> right, right. I'm not going to pop that much popcorn for you to make <laughs> that kind of money. Uh -huh. When I was in a smaller space, mm -hmm. you could have gave me the opportunity uh -huh. then. Uh -huh. so, but, uh, you know, it, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. It's a business move. Mm -hmm. And God has opened a door that we can come home. Mm -hmm. My mom and my aunt, mm -hmm. you know, they have have worked me a lot, uh -huh. and um, they can't continue to go like that, and I can't continue. Yeah, right, that. right. So now you move stuff closer to home, don't have to run. And all mm -hmm. Okay, that's good stuff. Good yeah. stuff. All right. Oh man, we got a lot of stuff going in the chat. We're gonna catch up on the chat. <laughs> uh, Crystal Washington, it's the best popcorn you could ever taste. You eat the whole bag. I believe me, I've eaten it. It's good, very good. That's my fiance. Your fiance. Okay, there you go. Thanks for joining us, Crystal. Uh, Daily Revenue. Uh, thanks for the info. You, uh, you welcome. BLV Mark, where do we get the recipes? <laughs> the their <laughs> recipes, I don't know. That, that's a family recipe that they have. Correct? That, that your, your that, that they're not giving theirs away. <laughs> uh, you would have to join the business and uh, sign a disclosure. Uh, but we can talk. If you send me an email and send me your uh, your thoughts on how to come into the business, and um, and we can talk later. Okay, there you go. Uh, Demar, uh, what price points? What do you sell your bags for? Uh, these small bags, mm -hmm. they go for four dollars. Mm -hmm. Um, then I have a small. They are. They were eight dollars on there, and I brought them back down to what I sell them in the store for, mm -hmm. and I brought them back down to six. Mm -hmm. uh, then I have a medium bag, which is ten. Mm -hmm. And I have a jumbo bag, which is 25. Mm -hmm. Now, the ounces on the small bag, the, the mini right here is eight ounces. Mm -hmm. uh, this is 16 ounces. The medium is 32 ounces. And the jumbo is 64 ounces. Okay, there you mm -hmm. go. And um, we sell out, we just have two small and large, five and 10. Uh, okay. I, I have to do that because, uh, because of the North Carolina education system. My high school students, they can't do the, the five timetable. So I, I think everything's five dollars. So I, they won't mess my cash register up. If I start putting ones and twos in there, yeah, so my, my yeah. cash register ain't going to add up. So I, that's one of the things that we do I, I, when they give them the cash register. Tell me your five timetable. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. If they can do that, then we, you can go to the cash register. We can talk. There you go. All right. Uh, uh, Ashima Isha. Uh, I don't, I, I, I'm killing your name, sorry. Really simple business. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a great business, uh, but uh, it, it, it is, it is, takes some work. It's, uh, so do, who, who does all your uh, popping? You or? I, I do. Yeah, you, yeah. And uh, my mom has uh, my sister mm -hmm. and my nephew. Okay. But initially, right now, mm -hmm. 
I do all the pop. pop. Yeah, yeah, and then, uh, that's the thing. If you're gonna be popping, you're gonna be popping. You can't, you yeah. can't, you can't, you can't be yeah. talking. You can't be uh, doing other stuff. You got to watch that cooker. And it don't take much for it to get away mm -hmm. from you, and it can be very dangerous. Um, okay, I, I, it's, I'm from Canada. Uh, would you be willing to share your secret recipe <laughs> and the business process for a fee? Uh, uh, we have actually talked. So, do uh, you think you might be it might be doing a class or so? Uh, yes, yes. So, uh, be on the lookout. We'll bring them back, but he's thinking about actually doing a class. Um, and also, you I, I don't know, I might be putting a spot. You say you might even have a, a, a cooker or something. Could you make yes. your own cookers? Yes, I, we, we make our own cookers. Mm -hmm. And I have um, currently right now about six mm -hmm. uh, that I have sure. available. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I need to, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I want to visit that, mm -hmm. that area of the business. And this is what God is bringing us to mm -hmm. okay. uh, so that. We can venture out to more people and help people get into the kettle corn lemonade business. Okay, there you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right. All right. Uh, um, how do you market an online or uh, or did his previous customer base follow him? All right. So uh, the, the people who are were at your coming to your actual brick and mortar are they now uh, going to be? He's going to transition them on to your online and um, and who handles your online marketing? Is that the young man? That yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's the young man and, and myself. Um, what I did from the start, um, for anybody that's out there listening, um, and I, any, in any business, this works. You gather the emails and contacts from everybody, from each and everybody you meet. I don't care if you gave them a free bag or a free sample. Um, you gather the information. Because their email is normally going to go to their hip <laughs> and they're going to check their phone mm -hmm. right away. Mm -hmm. So if I send out a mass email uh, out of 200 people, I'm going to get 20. Mm -hmm. uh, um, if I send them out of 1,000 people, I'm going to get 300, mm -hmm. 400, uh -huh. you know, just to respond. Right. You know, send them out something just to respond. So I have been um, talking to my crew <laughs> since day one they done got tired <laughs> they, done, they they've been ready to hang me up in the uh -huh. back because i was like get the information had you got the information <laughs> i don't care if they just want to eliminate i want the information uh -huh. because not only is that just for today mm -hmm. that information is for five years mm -hmm. ten years uh -huh. down the road you know about Three Boys Popcorn. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we're formerly known as Popcorn Preachers. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's going to carry over mm -hmm. to Three Boys Popcorn mm -hmm. because I have their what? I have their email, I have mm -hmm. their information, I have their phone number at my access. There you go. There you go. Good stuff. All right. Um, uh, contact info, please. Um, his nephew will uh, we'll put it in the uh, chat. And um, I would put your number in there, but God knows if you have so many people calling. You got okay. He got it. He got it coming in. <laughs> All right, they go three boys popcorn. Got it in there. Yeah, I don't want to put your number in because what happened? Uh, everybody should put my number, but these videos play all the time forever, and you have them calling two or three o'clock in the morning. I saw you on the YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you tell me about your popcorn? <laughs> they they call you nonstop. So. But yeah, uh, if you look, three boys popcorn just popped in, and they got the uh, got the way y'all can reach them. Okay, uh, I like the idea for starting home marketing and selling online. Yeah, uh, most of our popcorn, um, we sell ours mostly online. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I, I like the online popcorn. Yeah, you told me that. Yeah, I like the online. Met. Yeah, when I first mm -hmm. met. I sell most of my online. I like that. Uh, we actually are going to expand and get more into it uh, this fall coming. Uh, like I said, I just bought a new shaker, uh, but that was really my hold up. Uh, I can pop my popper, I can pop really quick, mm -hmm. but um, my shaker where I shift out my popcorn, I can only do one at a time. And as oh, they uh, as they scooping that out, uh, I I could be popping another one, and uh, but I have to wait for them to get the other one bagged up. 
And uh, so now that I got two shakers, two, two shakers, yes, yeah. yeah. So now I can uh, I can pop one, and then I can switch over to another flavor. But that's the other thing too. When I be at events, I do a sweet and salty. This one, you got more caramel. <laughs> You got to wait till we get this out. Exactly. You do the same, you have to say. Oh, man. They don't want what we got. Yeah. They want what you don't have. Yeah. What's going to sold out. Yeah, yeah. Every time. Yeah. I don't know how that happens. Yeah. That happens mm-hmm. quite a bit. So now I'll be able to, uh, to uh, pop a sweet and swap through all my different flavors mm-hmm. uh, and, and not miss a beat. I can have uh, one person, um, two people after, actually scooping and bagging, one person taking money and I'll pop. Uh, but I gotta get me. Uh, I gotta get a young man or a young woman to actually uh, let me show them how to pop that I feel comfortable enough with. Yeah, um, and yeah. then once I get that, I'm putting them in the trailer and they they head now. They head now. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's the uh, uh, the uh, handle, the email address, right there. Uh, and you go there. That's their YouTube. Go to their YouTube. That's how you can send them on YouTube. Do you have an email that you like for them to email at? Um, three boys popcorn will put their email address in there too. Okay, DLB okay. Mark said so this print will make labels. Yeah, um, now with those labels, uh, I like the labels that doesn't smear with the uh, grease. And, mm-hmm. uh, and um, I, I use a, like a, because uh, I have kind of that same bag, I have like a clear label that actually go in the back for my ingredients. I use the uh, the generic one for my yeah, ingredients. For sure. uh, then I, I use uh, same, well, same, doing the same thing. Same thing. Yeah, exact same, same thing. thing. Exact same and, thing. Uh, you just want to display your, you know, the, the, the flavor on your bag. Uh-huh. Um, I made these myself. This is one that we've had for years. Yeah, I remember that one on your <laughs> twist. I remember that one on your twist. Yeah, but I just just created these mm-hmm. like a day ago uh-huh. and today. There you go. So, uh, you know, it, it brings more uh, life to the bag. Uh-huh. I like it looks, that. It looks more presentable. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to put the ingredients on the bag. That, same thing mm-hmm. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. The other thing that I, I'm getting into, um, uh, I say I'm going to do it every school year. They come in, they, uh, they ask me about it, but I still don't push it. Yeah, the fundraisers. <laughs> yeah, the fundraisers. I got the sheet and everything, <laughs> but I, I didn't push it this year because, uh, to be honest, my ice cream took off. Oh, and I'm, I'm trying to get the others staying up and going, but this year I am going to uh, go with the school because uh, I see everybody is doing it now and they're doing the fundraisers with the popcorn and uh, just send a sheet out and let them order what they want and mm-hmm. they just pop it and uh, and I, I send it out there to them. Yeah. yeah so. But yeah, there's a lot of ways you can make money with this uh, uh, this kettle corn. I have a young lady coming on Wednesday. She owns the ice cream parlor. I, 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 if you're watching, sorry. But, <laughs> This is the last time, about the last time she's going to pop. <laughs> After she come here and she, um, she pops. I, I shouldn't say that. No, you can pop whatever you like. Uh, but you got to learn how to pop because I don't want to be here popping with you. But uh, she actually starting to carry it in her ice cream parlor too. But she actually comes up here once a week and she'll actually use my um, setup to actually pop. And uh, okay. they got it in her ice cream parlor too. But yeah, so it's a money maker. Yeah, it's, it's a money, money maker. maker. Yeah, it's a money maker. Now, uh, um, what do you see? Uh, what's your big business season? Is it the fall or winter, or is it the summertime? Or? Um, probably the fall and winter. Yeah, uh, yeah. is our business because you get into more gifts uh-huh, and uh-huh. people buy bigger bags because family coming yeah. home, Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. and then, you know, um, the lemonade mm-hmm. always go good. Uh-huh. You know, with a family function. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I had a lady the other day just buy, just buy about maybe 10 of those big bags. Wow. I mean, the big mega bags. Uh-huh. And she just had a, a popcorn party. That's it? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted 10 flavors, uh-huh. 10 big bags. Uh-huh. Oh, man. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah. Yeah, I had that. I even had, um, uh, last year, I had uh, a lady who was having a wedding. And she 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 wanted to uh, she actually gave gave me the labels to put on uh, the wedding labels mm-hmm. to put on the bag. So we popped the popcorn for her wedding and put it on there. Uh, we do it uh, also uh, from the uh, the town. It's uh, uh, the visitor and tourism board here in Springfield. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, during Christmas, they send out those uh, my Christmas bags. So mm -hmm. I do uh, I do Christmas corn for them. But yeah, we make make a lot of lot yeah. of money. A lot, a lot of, of money in kettle corn. Yeah, yeah. It, it really is. Uh, just get started. That's it. That's it. All right. So uh, with that being said, if they would like to order some of your kettle corn, uh, you all have a website uh, you all can put in to actually order some kettle corn. Uh -huh. Yeah, we have uh, uh, threeboyspopcorn.com. Okay. All right. So if you go there, the threeboyspopcorn.com, um, we uh, you can actually get the actual uh, order his actual popcorn. They'll ship it out to you and uh, and, and get a taste of it. Uh, we'd love to have you come back. Uh, uh, come back on to the note. If you're interested in doing like a, a kettle corn class and stuff, I um, am. You are? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get together and uh, we'll find a uh, find a, a, a way where we can actually offer a class for people who want to come out and learn how to pop. Um, they want to learn how to pop uh, and, and how to actually make kettle corn and stuff. Uh, we can get together and we can, we can do that. Like I said, uh, I, I, I I learned from uh, from uh, from the colonel and they've done it for over 30, 40 years. Him and his wife and his family. Um, they've been doing it 10 years. So this is not Mike Sneed, come try to tell you all. Yeah. And I've just been popping kettle corn for, for two years. Uh, they, they they got years and years of experience of actually making kettle corn. They have their special recipes that they use, uh, and they can tell you their recipes. I can tell you my recipes, too. Uh, so, uh, well, I'll take that back. I can't say they tell you their recipes. I'll show you my recipes if you want to use my recipes. But theirs, uh, I've been passed out to their family. And uh, I, I want y'all to keep those. And it is a different taste. It, 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 really it, it really is a different taste than what anybody else has. And I want you all to keep that and tell y'all get rid of franchise or whatever. But uh, yeah, if you want Mike Sneed's kettle corn <laughs> recipe, <laughs> I'll give you Mike Sneed's kettle corn recipe. Uh, but once again, I want to thank everybody for watching. If you hadn't already, uh, go out and purchase those, uh, a ticket for the National Convention coming back on Thursday. From Thursday until June 15th, um, till our national convention, we're going to be actually planning a national convention on how we're going to get things organized, uh, what, what's going to be happening. We're going to actually now just get into, just get ready for the national convention, get deeper into the actual uh, applied repair business. Uh, I, I had to talk to, uh, uh, I talked to Slick earlier today. I found out it's going to cost me uh, a little more 15 grand. <laughs> To get my sewer and, and plumbing and all that done over at the new place. So guess what? I don't might need it to hop back in the truck. So I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing two I'm doing two sewer system calls every week. Um, going uh, uh, to, to get the money to, uh, to dump back into this day. I just I, I like I say I hate to have to come out my pocket to pay and uh, not to go out here and do this uh, appliance repair and make that pay for. Me. So I'm gonna read these next two then uh, then we're gonna get out here. Mike, did the deal work out with the kettle? Uh, did the deal work out with the kettle corn equipment? Yeah, uh, as far as my kettle corn, uh, yeah, I, I, I got my kettle corn equipment uh, up and running now. Uh, I, uh, the colonel doesn't make it anymore. Um, he's uh, he, he he actually retired, and I'm actually buying his last shaker. Uh, but uh, uh, Mr. Z Man here, he actually makes kettle corn poppy and all that, so um, he can make. Equipment. Quinn Hodge, Pete, uh, Mike, great show. Thank you, man. All right, appreciate it. All right. Uh, like I told y'all, I'll be more mindful of your time. I'm getting out at a decent time right now. Thank y'all for watching, and uh, I'll talk to you all later. Bye bye.